alternatives. In this video, we're going to talk about working independently, whether or not you're working from home uh, uh, as part of an online class or as part of, or if you're working part of an online class or if you're working uh, uh, as an indie uh, or you're just telecommuting. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities in the video game industry to work from home and or work from where you want. So welcome to freedom. Uh, working, uh, when you're working from home, uh, there's a lot of opportunities to feel, uh, to be able to do what you want. Um, it also gives you time to engage in, you know, healthy habits, uh, you know, and making it, uh, uh, making time for people when it's convenient for everyone, uh, or, you know, uh, over meals or something like that. Um, uh, you know, it, it, there can be a lot of opportunities there. Um, and it's also, you know, a time to save money. Um, lunches with coworkers, for instance, uh, you know, when you're going to the game, uh, when you go into the industry, a lot of people want to go out and that's expensive. Some people brown bag it and bring it there. Some studios will actually provide lunch for you, but different times. But sometimes that can, you know, uh, add up to a lot of money. Uh, you just, you know, will have to eat over the Internet now that mukbangs are popular. Maybe uh, that'll be the new way people share uh, you know, share meals sometimes, uh, you know, and also you don't have a commute, uh, so there's no gas. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, uh, when I was working independently from home in Seattle, like I moved my car in order to not get a ticket because I had to do street parking. But like other than that, I didn't really use it. Um, so, you know, it was an opportunity for me to kind of uh, do whatever, you know, I wanted to do. Uh, and, you know, you can also live where you want, whether this is just going back home, uh, whether this is living somewhere really cheap. I know a couple people up in Maine uh, who, you know, they just really love Maine and it's an inexpensive area. And since it's so inexpensive, that's just, you know, opportunity to save money and not have to do things. You don't have to make as many sales in order to maintain the same uh, level of lifestyle. Uh, and, you know, there's like uh, Sarah Colin Northway. Uh, this is Northway Games. Uh, they travel around uh, the world. Um, they're uh, husband and wife, Sarah and Colin Northway. And they'll they'll travel around uh, uh, to wherever it is that they want to uh, and work from there, from laptops, because that's just kind of the industry they're in. So, uh, you know, you can also, you can have opportunities to just like, you know, do what you want. Uh, you know, I went cross country a couple times uh, and it's really beautiful, uh, you know, uh, parks and stuff. If you can get an internet connection and, you know, most... Uh, most cell phone carriers can give you, uh, you know, at least 10 gigs or, you know, whatever. So that that might be enough uh, just being able to hop from library to library. So the problem with freedom is that it's hard. So no one's watching, which means that no one is really engaged in your process. So your results matter. Um, also, sometimes you can be working across the day, like uh, when we were working with studios, just, you know, we were just working with studios in India, but um, uh, we had uh, to do a lot of late night, early morning meetings in order to match up our time zones. Uh, so, you know, your work can sometimes be a little bit more not nine to five, and that can matter to some people. The other thing about this is that knowledge is only passed intentionally. So like co-location, which is when you're next to each other, um, that is really easy to pick up on body language. You can even see what the content of a meeting was about just by uh, watching the people walk out the door sometimes just by the expressions on their face and knowing what the topic was. Uh, so, you know, that is a really uh, difficult thing to, to remember is that uh, all of that uh, information is lost. So you have to very intentionally um, talk to people. Um, you have to communicate effectively. And I, I talk about communication more in another video. I'll link it down below. Uh, so for some, this is really difficult. Uh, this is something that a lot of people have trouble with. Uh, I know through, you know, uh, as a professor, uh, sometimes I can, uh, uh, sometimes I'll have students, uh, you know, they don't really communicate upwards to me. Uh, and, and that's sometimes it's just because they're uh, anxious or uh, depressed and um, you know that is a big issue in this kind of uh, this kind of setup because um, you know you need that contact uh, and you and you know I've seen like reddit forum posts talking about like the only contact I have is with the grocery store clerk uh, and you know that is not really what you want that's not good what we need to do is we need to conquer that um and we do that by uh understanding that we have to communicate 
and trying to communicate often. So we break down the uh, the scariness of it, doing it more and more often, you'll get more used to it. Uh, you know, it might be still anxiety driven uh, for doing some emails or whatever. Sometimes that can just be still scary. Like, you know, I, I still always prepare when I do cold calls um, to a cold call being someone I don't know who I'm just trying to. Uh, that can be a really uh, uh, challenging part of a conversation because, you know, there's uh, probably some sort of reason I'm doing that. So how do we uh, use some tactics uh, to make sure that we can have a good work environment? Um, so first is establish a space where work happens. Uh, it can be physical. Uh, for those who can't, you know, like a, an extra room, uh, if you have an extra room, only use that room for that purpose. Um, and, and that's what I mean by establish a space. So it's a space where you go to go to work. And it could just be the other side of the kitchen table. You know, this might be also the lighting. Uh, this can really help just like turning on your study lamp. For instance, I know all of you uh, might have gotten those like Yukon lamps. They've been given out for a little bit. Uh, but uh, so something that you uh, only turn on when you're studying, maybe you pull up a chair, uh, you could even, uh, you know, light some incense or, uh, you know, don't burn down your house for sure, but uh, put put on a, a smelly candle or something like that um, to start setting up, you know, start getting into work mode, quote unquote. The really important thing to do is uh, if you use a computer that you also are going to be playing games on, uh, establish a work account, something that you can log into on like, you know, a uh, that doesn't have all your games installed. It doesn't have all of your notification, Instagram bars, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it also would have a separate internet history, one that doesn't automatically pop up unless you, you know don't try not to log in or whatever, but, uh, 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 or try to, you know, try to use your school account, uh, or your uh, work email for work and just keep everything separate. Um, that way you're able to kind of switch gears. So you also have to shut out distractions. Uh, distractions can uh, really kill your productivity, uh, especially if you're at home. This could be, you know, friends, uh, roommates, parents, uh, loved ones, whatever. The uh, people often will want to, you know, talk to you. Uh, this happens at an office too, especially in open plan, uh, you know, an open office environment. So you really need to shut out uh, all the distractions you can put on a big set of headphones to, you know, communicate to others that you're not paying attention to them, uh, put up a screen, uh, you know, uh, uh, put up a screen or a little sign if you have to. It, obviously, it can be very uh, difficult, but, you know, do your best. And another thing I, I found really helpful, uh, put pants on. Uh, you know, if you put pants on, uh, put dress like you're going to go work, at, uh, going to work or dress in clothing that is, uh, you know, focused, uh, not uh, not necessarily just sweatpants or whatever. Some people can just work in whatever, uh, but uh uh, but uh, oftentimes, if you need to jump onto a chat, uh, it, it can be pretty apparent, uh, which you, you might be fine with. But uh, if you have, you know, like a if you have a different look that you'd rather project to people, uh, getting dressed in that look can be really helpful, especially then you can just go hop onto Skype or whatever and talk to people. Uh, speaking of, of Skype, uh, make sure you have some where if you, uh, um, you know, if you can make sure that your lighting has three point lighting, uh, three point lighting is you want to have a uh, light that is coming from behind you from uh, above, uh, if you can. So maybe like an maybe like an overhead light, nothing that's specifically in frame, but something that will highlight and make your body pop from the background. You want to have a background that is professional ish. Uh, you want to make sure that you're sitting in a place that has, uh, a, you know, orderly uh, backgrounds. So it just kind of uh, leads to a more professional environment for other people who you're working with. So uh, the other thing you should definitely be doing, and this is Right at the beginning, now that, uh, you know, if you're just starting uh, to work independently, just starting to work from home, uh, develop a routine, especially right now as the change is happening. So before you get set in your other, your, you know, maybe less uh, productive routines, we'll talk about that in a second. You need to also create a variety within your routine. So for instance, exercise, if you're going to set like, hey, 30 minutes a day of exercise, it should be, you should be doing different exercises each day so that you 
so that you don't get bored of things uh, that can often happen. Uh, maybe you're one of those people who can eat oatmeal forever, but uh, you know, a lot of people need a variety. So put different fruits in oatmeal each day, you know, that kind of thing. Another thing is to sleep regularly as an independent developer. Uh, it's going to be really easy to think, hmm, maybe I should stay up late and play another two rounds of this match because uh, you've been playing for a while. Uh, and, you know, I've I have done that and that has been a mistake. Generally, uh, I, you know, I don't remember those games as much as I remember feeling really groggy the next morning. Um, and uh, so just keeping your sleep regular. Uh, and doing all the sleep hygiene things that you need to do, like making sure that your PC, if it has a bunch of LED lights, turn those off. Blue light is awful. Put your phone on night mode. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's settings to make sure that you have less light and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Also, a thing to keep in mind is to keep an eye on your data. So you're not, um, you know, it depends on where you're at. Uh, but for instance, my my provider at home uh, restricts my data to one terabyte, uh, which sounds like a lot. But I, you know, I hit that cap pretty regularly. Uh, you know, I, I monitor it and I never go over, but uh, I get pretty close to it. And that's just between myself and uh, my partner. We both watch Netflix. We play video games. Uh, and I also do a lot of, you know, uh, work uh, as a game developer. So obviously I use a lot uh, and they charge uh, 50 bucks extra a month for, you know, unlimited data. So keep an eye on that. Uh, syncing projects can be really a, a data hog. Uh, the other thing that was for me a data hog was Steam uh, automatic updates, uh, and I had a lot of games installed. If I if I created a new computer, which I would do occasionally, I would probably download a bunch of games that that month. So that can really be a big impact on what you're using. Uh, also, Instagram and like a lot of apps seem to have automatic download features, um, and uh, that can be a big pain in the butt too so it's just something to keep an eye on you might have unlimited data um you know uh but uh you might not so just check your check your plans or ask the person who uh, runs your internet um or you know go to the library when you need to do major uploads i guess um we'll see how their wi-fi can handle it but you know choose a choose a day when not a lot of people are around you know, I mentioned before communication. So you have to actively communicate. You this is 360 degrees of communication. Uh, it's a concept thinking about everyone around you as different people who you need to discuss different things with. So you're going to have a, a boss or maybe a teacher. You need to tell them about your successes and your failures uh, because otherwise they're not going to really know because they're not necessarily paying attention to you 100% of the day, especially if you're working from home. Uh, so you need to uh, report back to people. Uh, you need to talk to them. Um, you know, some of my more successful grad students um, take it upon themselves to uh, email me a weekly update when I uh, when I assign them a task, they just say, hey, you know, no progress or this is progress or whatever. And, you know, it, it, depending on whether or not we're meeting regularly uh, uh, on on that topic. Uh, there's also, you know, your department colleagues and classmates. Those are people not necessarily in your group, but it is the people around you in the office. Uh, they, you know, they notice you, but only, you know, more superficially uh, things in announcements when you talk in meetings. So that's how they get to know you. And that's the only communication they have. So, uh, you know, if especially if you're uh, pretty critical in if you're pretty critical when you're you know giving feedback and that's the only way they know you, uh, that might be something you need to work on in terms of communicating other things about you to, you know, you know, give you give them a, a solid framework of who you are. And then there's your group mates, right? The people who you're working with directly. These are people who you are probably working uh, uh, and you have to talk with a lot. Uh, you need to have uh, you probably need to be specifically connected inside of a chat room or something. Uh, and then also, you know, your direct reports, someone who is reporting to you, you need to communicate downwards to them um, in terms of what your expectations are and what uh, what's going on. Um, and the and of course, also the player, right? You're communicating to the player through your work and through your art, what's going on. Um, but also, you know, through Twitter and other things, often uh, video game companies will, of course, market and talk about uh, talk about the game uh, directly with people. So these are you know, so you need to think about all of them.
uh, and you need to think about uh, the information that is being passed on to each group and making sure that you have and that they have enough information so that they uh, uh, so that they know what's going on. One of my uh, recommendations uh, as you're establishing a routine is exercise, but don't exercise for like weight loss, exercise for the endorphins. So endorphins being the nice, fe good feelings that you get uh, when you exercise, this happens immediately every time, even if you're just uh, going for a walk or something, it gets the blood rushing, uh, you know, it gets your cardiovascular system working. Uh, so exercise is not necessarily thinking about it from a pound perspective, but just something that you do. Uh, outdoor exercise is also good. Uh, if you live in a park or a trail somewhere where you're, you can get outdoors, uh, that's uh, we have a department here at UConn who actually uh, designs parks and, you know, landscape architecture, that kind of stuff. Um, and that's a really important thing um, that a lot of people need. Uh, there's been uh, papers about how uh, spending time outdoors could be really uh, beneficial to you. So, you know, on the days that it is nice enough to go outside, go for it. Uh, it's It can be really helpful. Uh, it also gives you time to work through problems. Uh, so you're not going to be driving into work, right? So uh, when is it that you're going to be uh, thinking about those problems? If you're staying from home, maybe, you know, don't let your hygiene slip too much. But uh, you might want to think about the fact that maybe if you're not taking a shower every single day, you might not be thinking about those problems in a way that can really uh, um, uh, that can really benefit you. So this is a, a good time for you to be able to take a break and or think through problems. Um, it also really Im increases your sleep and your mood, which is really helpful. So if you're sleepless uh, and at night, you know, go for a run, uh, wear reflective gear, uh, but uh, go for a run, you know, and it, and it also might help with a waistline if that matters. But like, so you're not walking to class as well. Uh, this is uh, so this is my walk from my classroom to my office each day. It is 0.4 miles is, uh, you know, depending on which direction you're going, it's, uh, uh, you know, eight, nine minute walk. So I might do this two times a day. That, that means I'm walking approximately one and a half miles uh, every day just going to my classroom. Uh, this is, you know, one of the nice benefits actually of being in academia, uh, specifically at the University of Connecticut, uh, just because the campus is uh, kind of spread out. It, it doesn't mean you do more walking, but that is actually kind of a good thing uh, if you think about the amount of time that uh, you spend uh, sedentary uh, in an office chair. Um, I used to go for walks when I was thinking through problems uh, that I used to have to walk outside the office. Uh, I used to walk around inside the office, but people got irritated and they were like, hey, why aren't you sitting down and working? And I was telling them, well, I am working. Uh, but uh, so, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, even if it's just going for a walk, exercise doesn't have to mean that you're, you know, jazzercising every single day. Uh, but if, uh, you know, whatever it is that helps you is great. Uh, a yoga or whatever might be, you know, might be just uh, what you need. There is a, a great 30 day beginner yoga um, uh, series. I will also link down below. You know, and uh, and and this is just to one of the uh, apartment halls. I know that it takes about a mile to walk from Bishop to uh, Towers. Uh, so, you know, obviously some of you take the bus, but uh, if this is part of your routine, realize that you're losing about, you know, you're losing two miles worth of walking every day. Uh, so you want to make sure to maintain that. You know, that can be difficult to maintain, uh, but uh, it is important to do. Uh, uh, and it gives you time, like I said, to think through problems and, and that kind of thing. So uh, cooking, uh, one of the cool things about working from home is that uh, you can use really cheap uh, cuts of meat and or uh, putting in long term uh, stews, that kind of stuff. Don't burn your house down for sure. Uh, you you want to make sure that you are either using a timer if you're not sitting in the kitchen, for instance, um, but using a crock pot or uh, making sure that you just keep, you know, keep an eye on things. That's really all you need to do. And, uh, you know, like, for instance, uh, you know, I eat a lot of uh, chicken and leg quarters there. Uh, you know, for if you you know want a recipe, it's for uh, put it, your oven at 425 and stick them in for 40 minutes or 45 minutes if you have like four of them in there. Um, because uh, I, I cook some for the next day and to have cold, uh, and you put whatever spices you want on it that day. It's generally really inexpensive, uh, to um, uh, buy those. You know, you can also buy things, it's called like beef chuck, you can buy ribs or pork butt, um, uh, which they're all around like four bucks a pound or even two bucks a pound if uh, you know. You know, there's a sale going on on certain stuff. 
Uh, if you're a vegetarian, this is still really awesome. Tagines are really great. I like cooking a lot of those, um, uh, which are you know usually fruits and chickpeas, and some some tagines have meats in them, uh, but they can totally be done without, uh, or you know a, a, a you know a chili or anything of that nature. Um, chickpeas and black beans, buying dried is really inexpensive. You can buy a lot of that chickpeas, black beans, rice, uh, a lot of dried foods. You can live really inexpensively on, um, but dried, not canned. Uh, uh, you know, for instance, if you're making falafel, uh, don't buy canned chickpeas. They're just, you won't make a good, uh, falafel. Um, they're really, uh, you know, they're really easy to make, uh, soups. Uh, so, um, and if you've never made a soup before, uh, there's something called mirepoix. Um, that's the, the word down there, M I R E P O I X. It's a French word. Um, and what it means is a, uh, set of three vegetables. Americans, um, uh, and French cuisines, uh, generally are based around onions, carrots, and celery. So if you're going to make a soup, uh, what you do is you throw chopped up onions, carrots, and celery inside of a pan. Uh, and when you're done with uh, browning them, uh, you know, don't burn them, of course, but once you're done browning those, uh, you throw them in the pot uh, or you put water in, uh, you know, uh, a vegetable broth or whatever it is that you're making. Uh, and then you can add in whatever else it is that you want to add, uh, you know, garlic, uh, mushrooms, uh, you know, any, anything uh, like that. Um, so, you know, the, there's a lot of really great options. And this is uh, kind of one of the nice things about working from home is not only inexpensive, but then like your house smells really great all the time uh, and, you know, not smelly uh, in a bad way. But like it just it smells really great. Usually when you walk in, you know, you get that. Uh, um, uh, that aroma. Uh, and you can uh, live off of one of those pretty cheaply too. All right. So my routine, uh, my schedule changes like every 15 weeks, basically, because I, I have different semesters as a faculty member. Uh, my classes are differently weighted. Uh, and sometimes I'm teaching more studios, uh, which can be six hours of, you know, in class time of my time uh, versus a, a seminar, which is three. So there's a different expectation, uh, working in certain, uh, certain ways. Uh, so my tasks are also changing constantly. Um, you know, between all the stuff I have to do, uh, it, this is running committees. Uh, sometimes these are like hiring committees. So things on that, uh, sometimes more work is added to my plate there. I'm writing reference letters. I'm, I'm usually talking to students sometimes, and sometimes the semester can be a little bit more heavy in terms of the amount of, uh, students that need to, uh, you know, take office hours with me. Um, you know, if there's a hard, if there's a difficult class and, you know, that's not, and that's just to talk about the work that I do, uh, as a teacher, I also have my own research, research and development tasks that I need to do uh, for, you know, my my work, uh, you know, for my work, uh, which is, you know, uh, funded research that uh, I, I need to also complete tasks with. So it can be really difficult. Uh, my partner, they also have a shifting schedule. Their schedule can be really different as well. And it can be sometimes the opposite of mine, you know, nights and weekends, and that can be really frustrating. Uh, so that, that can be very, uh, uh, so, so for me, uh, my routine is, is very flexible in terms of what I'm doing, but it kind of looks like this. Um, you know, I usually try to wake up around six thirty seven. Um, uh, this is, uh, I, I try not to use an alarm and I try to wake up naturally. I can do this by the way, because of Roman, uh, Roman is an, Roman is my dog. Uh, he is a greyhound and he really enjoys, uh, uh, whining until I get up. Uh, so it's just kind of like nature's alarm. Uh, so if you have a dog, maybe that's just the way to do it. Once you get up in the morning, once they get you up, uh, or a cat, sometimes cats will stick their, you know, paws in their, your mouth just to wake you up. Uh, that can be so frustrating, but a lot of times they're watching you and they have a good rhythm for figuring out how to wake you up. So once, you know, after I wake up, I have uh, what I call a European breakfast, which is basically like a hard boiled egg and, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, some sort of pepperoni stick or something like that. Uh, not a lot, uh, you know, maybe a cured meat or something, a piece of cheese or two. Uh, just something really small and fast. 
Um, you know, I sometimes on weekends or something, I might cook up a, a really big breakfast, but I might have that honestly for lunch. Uh, normally that have that and then some sort of caffeine caffeinated something. Um, and then I work, I usually work between, you know, I'll work from I'll work, I'll be able to get to my desk in like 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then I'll work on whatever I need to work on. Usually the more important tasks of the day are uh, the ones I do first. So like development tasks, things that take a lot of uh, mental energy or physical uh, energy or just, you know, an upbeatness. So like I, I try to record my videos in the morning so that I can the perkiest as I possibly could be. Um, and then somewhere around 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. depends on the day. You know, sometimes you really get into the groove. Sometimes you don't. I get frustrated or I need a break or sometimes I have to go to class. Uh, usually classes start around 930. It depends on the day, but sometime around on the days that I'm on, uh, on the open days that I'm not doing class, of course, uh, I'm usually going, you know, to the rock gym or running outside, weightlifting, bicycling. I try to vary it up, but, you know, I, I live in Connecticut. Uh, we have a lot of really interesting at least the place where I live, uh, we have access to a lot of different uh, outdoorsy events. Uh, there's um, there's both a green uh, path, uh, bicycle path down my uh, through my town or, uh, that goes around my town. Uh, but not only that, there's also uh, a lot of outdoor trails. So like uh, mountain biking, that kind of thing. Uh, I usually uh, hike those, but there's a lot of people who are really into that. Um, so, you know, just looking outdoors and just seeing what's going on out there might be interesting. If you're more of an indoors th person, you know, get, if you have a weight bench or something, all you need is a couple, uh, you know, a, a couple uh, metal weights and some dumbbells, and you can do most exercises uh, uh, to for your body through that. Uh, it, and if it's the first time you're doing uh, weightlifting or something, there's a lot of really great resources online and uh, to you know make sure you're doing it correctly. Uh, so you know around lunchtime, I have lunch. Uh, sometimes I you know sometimes during busy years, I actually have to forego lunch, uh, which I you know try not to do. But in an ideal world, I eat every day uh, for, for a lunch, but uh, sometimes I only do have something on the go again. Um, but I if I do have something, it's going to be something like a salad or a, so it's usually for, for lunch, like a soup or uh, a salad, you know, and then I go back into working, uh, after I've exercised a little bit and kind of thought about the problems I need to do and then had, you know, something to eat. Uh, I can go, I go back to teaching. I go to my meetings, uh, back to work, basically just whatever it is that I need to do. Maybe it's emails. Um, then around 4 PM I'll go home. Uh, then I'll make dinner. Sometimes these are, you know, uh, I have to hit some errands or whatever. Uh, the days that I'm, you know, not working uh, out in the morning, I might go at night. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that leads me to be, you know, getting home around eight or nine when I get back to work. Uh, usually these are like maintenance things. And by maintenance tasks, what I mean, uh, is a, uh, something like email or just like uh, something that is easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of mental effort, visual stuff. So like uh, video editing and that kind of thing can I can get done, you know, also while doing other things. Uh, and then around 11 p.m. I'll wind down and I'll try to you know play a game or read a book or something and around 12 sleep, go to bed. So, you know, that's basically my routine every day, uh, including weekends. Uh, obviously, like there is flexibility there, but these are the basic things I'm doing. Um, and, you know, day to day, uh, uh, I, I can make time for having uh, lunch with my partner or one thing that you're really going to need uh, if you're going to work from home is True Grit. Uh, True Grit, it's a it's a phrase that you may have heard. It's also a movie, uh, but it's a uh, get it done mentality. Uh, so, you know, oh, uh, when people are, are saying, oh, well, you know, X, Y and Z happened, but that was just because of, you know, A, B and C. So uh, having true grit means to be able to overcome that. Uh, to be able to say, okay, well, that model wasn't able to be put in. So I went around, I, you know, I bought a character model, or I found this free one, uh, so that I could still do my work. Um, and you, you know, you find ways around it, you don't report back failure, you report back, get it, it how you got it done. Um, and they also, you know, are striving for excellence. Uh, oftentimes, this means that someone who has, you know, someone who strives for excellence, someone who's going to be uh, trying to make the best thing that they can, and not just going to put it down and thinking, oh, well, this is just the, the basics of the assignment. I think I'm done with that. Uh, you know, this is barely what they wanted. Uh, you know, I think I'm done there. Uh, that that's not really the the attitude you need to have in order to be able to work independently successfully. Uh, and that's it can be really tough 
uh, to think this way. Uh, you know, it, it's it's not something that I you know uh, that people should take for granted. Um, it's a, you know something that is kind of not measurable. True Grit. Uh, there's a link to a video of someone talking about this more, and uh, she has a, a video, uh, uh, a TED talk, um, as well as some longer interviews uh, at like Google and stuff. Uh, I'll link it down below. Um, but uh, someone with True Grit has resilience to failure. So when you fail. You have to get back up, you know, get back up and get back in there. Uh, you just have to keep pushing forward even when you're messing up. So, uh, you know, and that that's feeling those can be a real big body blow. Uh, like if you if you mess up and you're like, oh, you know, hey, I didn't get the character model uh, to you because something happened. The you know house exploded and I now live on the street. Uh, you know, if that's the case, like maybe that is completely unavoidable that you know uh, Joey, who we're gonna pick on today, uh, that you know Joey uh, uh messed up there. Uh, it wasn't you know necessarily Joey's fault, it, but it still happened. So you have to still get it done. The other thing about this is you need courage. Courage, uh, you know, courage to go outside your comfort zone, I think in this case means like maybe it's writing emails or picking up the phone and calling. I know that's scary for some, for those who weren't born uh, uh, in the age of phones and were only born in the age of texting. Uh, but when text first came out, they were really like 10 cents a, a text. It was pretty uh, egregious. So I think a lot of people uh, who are older are more used to phone calls. Um, there's also... Uh, but that might also mean just Skype as well or Google Hangouts. You know, it doesn't matter what the communication method is, but sometimes communicating in those ways can feel is difficult for some. So you need courage to do it, whatever it is that you need to do. Courage to walk up to someone and call, uh, and ask them a question, uh, so to introduce yourself, uh, even though they don't, you don't know them, uh, you know, just being able to do that. So there are tools av available out there. Um, I'll link uh, my uh, dev setup environment, uh, which talks about a lot of the tools that I uh, generally use. But but uh, we have uh, a lot of tools out there for video game development, including GitHub, which has GitHub Pages, a, a feature that allows you to upload Unity builds to as WebGL, uh, which I'll, I'll link down, uh, which is also in that tutorial. So I'll link that down below, uh, as well as like a wiki, which I, I haven't uh, gone over, and, and a task tracking system. But GitHub is kind of a really strong package to get your stuff done, especially when you're collaborating with other people. Trello has also been really helpful for a lot of students. Uh, I, I know UConn students are uh, have access to that. Uh, Google Docs uh, or you know the Microsoft Office Docs. The, there's also shareable docs there. Uh, Slack, Discord, Skype, Hangouts, WebEx, whatever it is that you need to do to communicate. Uh, Slack and Discord specifically are really helpful because they have uh, uh, you know more of a chat room environment uh, that is maintainable. Uh, there's also Basecamp. Uh, as well. Uh, and uh, then also just, you know, your reminders on your phone uh, or reminders that you can share, uh, at least if you've got iPhone, an iPhone, you, you can share uh, a list of reminders out to a phone number, um, that kind of thing. So there are a lot of tools out there. Uh, game development specifically is rife with the ability to work from home, which is really nice. Other than that, I will see you in class.